you've ever thought of painting an old tractor or some farm machinery, then rust is something that um, you might have thought about and it can make attractive uh, subjects for a painting and I can show you now some of the colours that I use when I paint rust. If we can look down at my palette, I've got a, a variety of colours here which is not exhaustive at all. Any sort of orangey, browny, reddy um, colour will do. This happens to be some cadmium orange, some permanent magenta, some burnt sienna. That's a good one because it tends to um, granulate and give you a little bit of texture. And burnt umber, the same, that can granulate a little bit. And some ultramarine blue. Now, on a vehicle or on a piece of machinery, there's often the residue of some paint. And because of these orangey colours, I'm going to use a little bit of um, remaining blue from this. A uh, little bit of an uninteresting plate, but we're going to uh, rust this little plate up here, which was originally painted blue. So, I first just get some mixes going. This is sort of fairly close up and therefore in a paint, if this was a part of a painting, it would be fairly close to you. So therefore I'm going to make the colours quite strong. And I'm going to make sure I don't um, contaminate one with the other too much because I want to get a feeling of sunlight on this rusty plate. Now you could say, looking at this, that rust is not that bright orange. But you must remember in a painting you are also trying to represent not just the rust, but the sunlight on the rust. And without the warmth and the brightness of the actual sun, um, to increase the sort of saturation of some of the colours is a good way of doing it. So um, I've got some colours prepared here, all quite strongly mixed. And last, a little bit of useful ultramarine, just get that going. That's a bit watery actually. I put too much water in that, so just lift a little off. That's a lot better. In fact, that's still a bit watery. So, that's probably better. Okay, clean my brush, because I'm going to start, well, I'm going to start with the blue, in fact. Uh, the colour blue. And this is just cobalt blue. And I'm going to paint this corner has escaped the rust up here. So, I'm simply going to paint this blue in up here. Nice full brush mark. You can see there's quite a bit of paint on there. Okay, and I'll bring that down. And I'll, I'll take that round the corner actually because that bit is going to be painted all the way down to there. And then it's going to catch a little bit of weathering and rust. So what I would do straight away is clean my brush because I don't want any of that blue to pick up in the orange. Take some of the cadmium orange and paint a little of that around here. As it picks up uh, the blue, it goes uh, dull. And so I need to keep my brush clean and pick, always pick up a clean orange here. Okay, just work that in. Now I've got a little bit of creep and um, cauliflowering in there, but that actually helps this. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. A little bit more bright colour up here. Just re-wet that and drop some of that colour in, drag some of that muddy colour down here and put a couple of bits of wetness into that to get a little bit of pitting and the things that you would normally worry if you've got, this is what you want to try and get on this. Now I've done enough of the um, bright orange, I don't want it to get boring so I'm going to take some burnt sienna and into that I'm going to run another rust colour in here. Again, I ought to just watch the top edge of there that I keep it straight. I'm just going to go over that rivet and I'm going to bring that down. Now, any streaking on this vertical plate, you want to paint roughly a vertical brush mark because any sort of imp imperfections you leave, if they're vertical, it'll look like weathering. So now I'm going to pick the next colour up, which is um, a little burnt umber. So I'm going to just paint that dark into there. And I can also spot a bit of that up while that's still wet. And take a little bit of that up. Bring that down. I'm not thinking too hard about this. But you'll see the bright orange, once it blends in with the other colours, it actually looks fine. If you dull everything down too much, the whole thing will look too dull. 
And then uh, one of my favorite colors, if not my favorite color, is ultramarine blue. And it just works in pretty much anything you want to put it in ultramarine blue. It's a very versatile color. And I can put a little cool color in here and then add some orange directly to that and just darken the effect of some rust staining down through here. I'll probably put a bit dripping down from that. Those rivets and things. And now I'm just going to neaten it all up a little bit with some, just finish this with some burnt sienna at the bottom. Okay, so the idea is to get a good variety of tone and texture here. Okay, now this, of course, is going to be in the shade, as is, I don't know what this is, but it's a, a little support, could even be a bit of wood, but I'll make another little bit of iron or something. I ought to give that a bit of orange in there. And if all else fails, put a bit of ultramarine in it and it'll look fine. Now when that's dry, to make that three-dimensional, all you need to do is to take a darker mix. I'm going to use the ultramarine blue again and some uh, burnt umber. No, a little bit of burnt sienna actually, because keep the rusty feel to this. And this will darken this edge and give it a three-dimensional look. Again, you can, when, the, when this is dry, you can just put some little shadows on the detail here and add any other sort of detail you want. But again, keep the light and the shade, keep it three-dimensional, make sure you change the tone when you go around a corner to get a shape, and um, just try some of these warm and cool colours together. They can be really, really effective as rust. Here I have a little watercolour sketch um, showing these oranges and blues how they work together to create this feeling of rust.